All right, in this video, we're going to look at free trade and then the effect of a tariff. And we'll consider consumer surplus, producer surplus, and some of these other things here. So let's start with a case of strictly free trade. There is no tariff. Domestic consumers, uh, domestic consumers have a demand given by Q equals 100 minus P. Domestic suppliers, domestic firms have a market supply given by Q equals P minus 10. And the world price is $25. Without trade, uh, the domestic market would have an equilibrium price of $55, setting demand equal to supply, and an equilibrium quantity of 45 so given that the world price is less than the, the domestic price, uh, the comparative advantage here uh, lies in the rest of the world. So domestic consumers with free trade can buy the product at $25, and they will buy 75 units. Plugging $25 into the domestic demand equation, consumers buy, again, 75 units. Domestic sellers, the best that they can sell their product for is $25, the world price, and that's all they can get domestic sellers will bring 15 units to the market just plugging 25 into the market supply curve the difference between what domestic consumers buy and domestic sellers offer is made up by imports so 75 minus 15 is imports looking at this graphically if we were to graph the demand equation we get something like this and if we were to graph the supply equation, we get something like this. So what we did in the previous slide, we took that world price of $25, and we plugged it into the market supply, and we found that domestic sellers would bring 15 units to the market. And then we took this world price, and we plugged it into the demand curve, and we found consumers would buy 75 units. With that difference, this horizontal difference here, being represented as imports. Okay, so that's the number of imports coming into this country. To look at uh, some of the welfare effects here, uh, consumer surplus is going to be this giant triangle, the difference between the height of the demand curve and what consumers pay for the product, $25, all the way up to the last unit that consumers buy, which is the 75th unit. So this big triangle right here represents consumer surplus and as we know the area of a triangle is one half base times height so I provide those dimensions here 100 minus 25 so we've got a height of 75 units and then a base of 75 minus 0 gives us consumer surplus of a little under three thousand dollars producer surplus is going to be another triangle this little triangle over here on the left this producer sell their product at $25 so the difference between that price, $25, and the domestic supply curve right here, that area is producer surplus. So 25 minus 10 gives one dimension of the triangle, and then 15 minus 0 gives another. So producer surplus is a little over $100. With total surplus in the market, adding up these two numbers, we get 29.25. Okay, now the case of trade, we're going to impose, <clears throat> the government will impose a $15 per unit tariff. The domestic demand and supply curve, uh, they, they don't change. So the world price with the tariff, okay, this is what <clears throat> the new price will be in the domestic economy. It's going to be $25 from the last screen. We said the world price was $25 plus the tariff of $15. <clears throat> we get a new price of $40. So domestic consumers will now buy 100 minus the price of $40. Domestic consumers will only buy 60 units now. So consumption fell by 15 units compared to what we had in the previous uh, example. Domestic sellers will sell more at a higher price, so 40 minus 10, okay, analyzing the supply curve at a price of $40. Domestic sellers will bring more units to the market. And so compared to our first case, production by domestic sellers increased by 15 units. The difference between 60 and 30 happens to be imports, and imports now are lower in the face of a tariff. So imports increased by 30 units. In our first case, imports were 
75 minus 15 or 60. Now there are only 30, so we have a 30 unit reduction in the number of imports. Looking at this graphically, so demand and supply, those curves are unchanged. The world price, now the world price plus the tariff of $15. So this horizontal line shifts up by $15, okay? So plugging that $40 into the domestic supply equation, domestic producers bring 30 units to the market. Okay, we saw that on the previous slide. Plugging that $40 into the domestic demand equation, domestic consumers only buy 60. This horizontal distance now represents imports, so imports are lower. So now let's take a look at the effects of the tariff on uh, consumer surplus, producer surplus, government revenue, and then we'll add all of those together. So consumer surplus, once again, it'll be a triangle. This time the difference between the height of the demand curve and now $40, all the way up to the last unit consumed, which is 60. So this triangle right here is consumer surplus. And the area of that is given by these dimensions, and we get a value of $1,800. Producer surplus will be another triangle. Producers, domestic producers sell their product at $40, so the difference between $40 and the supply curve, all the way up to the last unit provided by the domestic producers. So this triangle right here has these dimensions, and producer surplus is now $450. Government revenue is simply the number of imports times the tariff. The tariff in the, this case is $15. We can recognize that area as being this rectangle right here. This is a 15 by 30 rectangle, and that identifies government revenue that they collect from taxing the import. So that also happens to be $450. If we were to add up total surplus, we get a value of $2,700. So now looking at the deadweight loss, owing to the tariff. One way we can think about the deadweight loss is looking at what happened to total surplus. Without the tariff, total surplus was $29.25. With the tariff, total surplus is now $2,700. So that difference represents the deadweight loss of $225. We can also identify the area, or areas I should say, of the deadweight loss in this diagram. Uh, the deadweight loss in this diagram is going to be recognized by two triangles. Here's triangle one. That area is part of the deadweight loss owing to the tariff. And this triangle over here also is part of the deadweight loss owing to the tariff. And I provide the dimensions of those triangles right here. So this is just another way of backing into the deadweight loss. So the, the intuition as to why these areas represent the deadweight loss uh, can be thought of as follows. Consumers okay, value these units between 60 and 75 more than the world price or more than the marginal cost of bringing these units to the market. Yet because of the tariff, consumers are not buying these units. So that's an inefficiency. Consumers value these units more than their marginal cost. And because of the tariff, those units do not get consumed. The intuition why this triangle represents the deadweight loss is as follows. The domestic, cons the domestic producers are, are producing these units at a marginal cost. The height of the supply curve represents marginal cost. Then the marginal cost that other producers can bring these units to the market for. So this is an inefficiency. Uh, these units are being produced at a cost greater than they otherwise could be. Summing this up then, the gains to the domestic producers and the gains to government revenue because of the tariff don't outweigh the losses to the consumers. Domestic consumers gain by looking at their change in uh, producer surplus uh, without the tariff Domestic producers had producer surplus of 112.5. With the tariff, it's 450. So domestic producers gain because of the tariff, and they gain $337.50.
the government gains revenue without the tariff. There is no revenue being generated here with the tariff. As we saw in the last slide, the government gets 450. So adding these gains up, the total gains because of the trade is $787.50. I should say the total gains because of the tariff is $787.50. The loss to consumers, however, is the, the shrinkage in consumer surplus. Consumer surplus without the tariff, consumer surplus with the tariff. So consumers lose consumer surplus of a little over $1,000. Netting those two values out, the net benefits here of the tariff are negative, and uh, you'll recognize that number as the deadweight loss. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.